Hello everyone, my name is Prab Nair and I'm working as a Chief Instructor at InfoSec Training. Hi team, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab and today we have another guest, Kavita Prabhakar. She don't need any introduction, she is a uh, she has a great contribution in the information security compliance and uh, she has a 10 plus year of experience in the compliance and, and currently she is working as an information security lead in one of the company. Along with that, she is a, a bike, uh, biker also and she do a <laughs> lot of lot of initiatives of uh, women upliftment, bike safety, bike security and all that. Along with that, one of the, one of the best humble human beings. I have seen in the information security compliance. Uh, I myself, you know, always struggled with 27,001. So one day I approached her that, okay, ma'am, can you please help me out with 27,001? And within a 30 second, within a one minute, sorry, not 31 minute, she replied back, up, this is how things work. So I thought, you know, this content, you know, should be shared with our subscribers to the viewers and future generations. So because people always have a visibility about, you know, how the 27,000 works, you know, they go through Google search about, you know, how the 27,000 work, they start with policies and all that, but no one tell us about, you know, from the basics. So I thought, let me invite Kavita ma'am in this particular session and she will basically share the insight about how to implement 27,001 from scratch in the organization. So over to you, Kavita, and thanks for coming out for this session. And I'm, I'm truly humble. Um, I'm truly honored to have you in this particular session. And it is it is a great honor for our subscribers also to have a person like you who basically supports other in the society and uh, taking out the time from a schedule for this session is truly amazing. And I'm sure it will be a great new year gift for our future students who are preparing for the certifications and pre also preparing for the job interview. And I'm sure this video will be a great benefit for them. Thank you so much, Kavita. Thank you. Thank you, Prabh. So much excited. Uh, I don't have to give myself introduction. So much uh, you have already introduced me to people. I'm so happy. And this is my first ever talk going on public. And first talk is with a, such a great fan. I'm so pleasured and blessed to have a talk and I'm with sure the, team Prabh. This will be one of the best talk I have because I personally, you know, took the assistance from her about 20s and the way she explained me it is truly amazing because i haven't find that content in the in any book so i'm sure i'm very excited i will be the first one who will be very excited for this session and it is also a newer gift for me to have kavita on this session to be frank i'm, I'm not lying that so kavita like uh, you know before going to start 27001 you know i always ask one question which inspire others also that okay ne? as a person you know how's your journey with information security what make you inspired to do to information security or is it a rocket science? Because I also receive a lot of feedbacks regarding Prab. I am not a, from a computer background or I am not a B-Tech or BCA. Can I do this? So do you want to share your five minutes on that area? Like you know, what make you to motivate? What were the important things you have seen in your career which make you motivate right, for the information right. security? Right. Very well, very well last question. I think I can give my own example, Prab. Uh, I was working with a multinational company uh, for almost like six years where I only know cloud, which is on a cloud platform. I seriously did not know how this cloud entire architecture of cloud or how this information security works. God's grace, I got into another company where it is completely they are into uh, spread across Pran India for uh, data center. Okay. Then there I was, to, I, I was talking to one of my colleagues and say she was promising, Bhai, Gurgaon ke liye I can deliver the server in the next four hours. And I was like, I Bangalore Whitefield to airport jane ke liye ghanta lagta and you are telling you will deliver the server in four hours. Then I was like, sure, totally shocked. Then I realized I did my back study from there. Then I am a BA graduate with zero knowledge. Wow. BA graduate ke liye history mera major hai. I seriously don't know anything about. Then I did a backward reverse engineering where I learned about what is cloud, how the configuration is done, how what is hypervisor, how is the configuration of the VMs which are done, how do you spin the VM? There are hundreds of VMs which can be like like rockets. Uh, matlab, rocket jesa urta hai. Rocket science nahi hai, sab kuch. So that is how I did. Then a lot of background, which I have done, a lot of effort, which I have put to learn is like a small, small questionnaire. See, I got into pre-sales profile wherein you will have to write a lot of content about cloud architecture and you will have to submit it to the customer. So the content should be so strong that uh, it sh we should actually win the bid. 
सो उसके लिए बहुत स्टडी करना पड़ता है मैंने बहुत कुछ मेहनत डाल के स्टडी किया और मेरा कोलिग जो साथ में थे मेरा सीनियर मैनेजमेंट जो भी साथ में थे डोंट वरी आई वी आर देयर टू सपोर्ट जो उनके सपोर्ट से मैं टुडे टुडे एज सच आई कैन टेल अबाउट व्हाट इज हाइपर हाइपोवाइजर व्हाट इज क्लाउड व्हाट इज स्टोरेज व्हाट इज बैकअप आई कैन सीरियसली टॉक अबाउट डीआर एंड बैकअप people get confused with dr and backup i can do that i can solely do the audit about information security in an organization i can build the security for an organization i can conduct an audit so within 5 years of span uh, i have learned a lot and after all this thing uh, learning about all this thing i actually wanted to judge myself where i stand so then i took up the certification iso 27000 lead certification i did my best in that and now from past 7 uh, years i am in the same industry successfully enhancing my knowledge whatever i have learned it is nothing nothing but still i am improving and working so w- one thing which i learned from this particular talk about you know the mm-hmm. basics are very important for cyber and information security correct me if i am wrong because if you talk about your profile also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you have a option to directly jump to cloud and directly start from the technical level but instead of starting mm-hmm. directly you did the analysis by doing the reverse engineering mm-hmm. where you started with the basics first right get your hand dirty on the basics first how the cloud work how the server work how the vm work that because until unless you don't know the basics you can't basically drive those activity so right. i always right. told my subscribers also that okay first fundamental rule for the information security or cyber security is learn basics you going to exactly. secure the switch but you don't know how switch work there's no point of securing the switch exactly exactly right right you will have to do exactly. always the reverse yeah you will have to always do a reverse engineering when you are doing this isms also a, a teacher has to study about the content before guiding uh, guiding the team whether exactly. the person is writing the content right or wrong so for that i did a reverse engineering then i learned what is virtualization what is cloud platform what is hypervisor how does the security works what is an osi layer so all these things is like uh, it doesn't i can say that it doesn't come in a span of one month or two months it will take some time yeah. but i would request everybody it is not a rocket science okay. seriously art student with a history major uh, today being being in a information security put little effort it will go on seriously can you i tell can you can, can i tell you my surprise yes, i'm a yes. ba pass oh can <laughs> i am also oh, ba right. pass and uh, in order to clear the exam i took home science instead of social science same history was the easiest subject <laughs> so i <laughs> so team right now you guys can see the live example we are not from a high fi universities and all that but yes seriously. we I'm are always a back bencher yeah. me also back is a back bencher by who can crack a clear 10th exam 12th and now this is what the journey we have but again it's not something okay you need to be a back bencher in cyber security but when if you want to be a, a good in cyber security you need to have a mastery of concepts until unless you don't have a mastery of concepts sorry it is difficult for you to survive in this industry right that's right. the most important thing so as as i said kavita like you know it's it's a great point you said so now when you're talking about as we are talking about today 27001 so there is a lot of you know this word is going very high fi everywhere 27000 certifications 27000 certification the organizations and all that why should company go for 27001 what is 27000 all about can you just help me out with uh, about this particular concept yeah right Uh, before going about this uh, when your organization is spread across multiple c- countries each country follow a different standard or each country follow a set of rules so you don't have to follow a set of standards manuki if you are working in europe your organization is spread across uk so you don't have to follow their specific standards yes agreed you will have to follow specific standards but this iso is a global standard internationally accepted standard wherein it is globally accepted you will follow a single standard for your entire organization if it is spread across the globe uh, if you are uh, sorry it is spread across, across the globe only one single standard iso 27000 which is a mother of all certification you can follow this standard and you don't have to go with the multiple standard you can add standards to it for example iso okay. 27001 which your stand, your organization has implemented it then you can add an hipaa to it and you can add a pci to it and other standard like bcp dr all those additional standards can be added to it you don't have okay. to go multiple standard okay but uh, you know i am running a company example theek okay? hai i am running a company mm-hmm. and uh, you know my company is doing great we have a appropriate security controls with us then why should i go for this standard matlab yeah 
I'm running a company. I have all the systems. I have a firewall and all that. Why I need to prove someone that okay, I have a 27,000 one. I'm very happy with that also, right? So is it a mandatory requirement or it is good to have? Like, can you just share your insight on this area? Yes, yes. This is uh, nobody will say that you will have to do this. You will have to go for this certification. So always, it is better to have a make or check act. One person is making it, another person is checking it. So okay. always, it is good to have a third person view who is authorized, who is approved in the uh, in global level. Then get that okay. person, get him Excellent. audited. He will certify. I, I will write the exam, and my peer will correct it. Then the, that is how the our audit policy is. Whenever you are doing it. You will have to make another person has to check about it. Again, yeah. checking it, an internal person is checking it. There might be a biased uh, feedback which might be given. Exactly. Right? For conflict an unbiased, yeah, conflict of interest will be there. For an unbiased feedback, if I have to uh, in, uh, communicate on a layman language, for an unbiased feedback, it is always good to go with an external party who will do an audit on our organization and they okay. will certify. And But this Kavita, is a like, global. You know, mm -hmm. Okay. But Kavita, just yeah. uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. As I said, you know, like as you said, it's a global standard. So if I, you know, it's it involves a lot of cost. Correct me if I'm wrong. It go up to lakhs right. when you go for the right. certification. Right. And sometimes yeah. the company also hire the full time consultant to maintain that ISMS twenty seven thousand one. So right. Right. why should I company invest the money? You know, we can hire an external consultant. He just do simple audit and tell you whether it is basically good or not. But why we yeah. are specifically spending money on the standards? Uh. For an example, as I told you previously, where I was working as a pre-sales consultant, and uh, I was working as part of bed manager as well, wherein you will have to write, uh, give, write a history about your organization, or what is okay. your organization doing, how is your infra, how is your uh, human resource doing, what all the security measures which you are taking as part of the human resource. There's so many parameters which you will have to write. So instead of mm. writing the, all those content, for example, if I have to write about an organization like a, a people like ten thousand people working in an organization, I'll have to write a huge write up. Instead of that, mm. I can say that yes, I do follow the standard, and this is the standard. I can just give my certificate saying that yes, my organization is certified on ISO twenty seven thousand. We follow this uh, uh, all these controls which are part of the ISO twenty seven thousand. It gives a lot of confidence to customer. Yes, mm. uh, uh, yeah, and the uh, customer base also will in. Seeing that yes, these people are already ISO twenty seven thousand certified. If an internal uh, certification is happening, so an internal audit, it is not certification. Internal audit, whenever it is happening, then it is like a un, uh, biased uh, feedback which is coming. Conflict of interest, True. what we do. So if an external True. party is coming to an organization to uh, perform the audit, it will be an unbiased feedback which will be. It is just not as a. Uh, uh, audit which they will conduct after audit, they will give you a certificate as well for that. Okay. So, which is globally accepted? It, the uh, the certificate which uh, they give you can be posted on your website as well. It is not like you can keep it uh, internally for your internal activities. You can give it to the customer. The customer confidence will be so much that yes, this organization okay. is ISO twenty seven seven thousand certified. They follow the controls as per the standard which are mentioned in ISO twenty seven thousand. I don't have to look into the any of the aspects much into it because there is an uh, already a third party which is audited, and I can be much assured my data is secure, my information is secure, and the uh, the NDA which I sign. They abide by the, all these uh, rules which they have mentioned in the NDA. So all these uh, points will be covered. So customers' confidence to gain that customer confidence to increase the customer database. Yes, we will have to invest. Once you invest, return on the investment is for sure. Okay, that that's that's basically a really uh, commendable things what you basically talk about, and mm -hmm. uh, one one. But which point? The one point which you basically talk about, you know, the practice and implementation of, you know, recognize and all that. Uh, that is a mm -hmm. that is a most important point. Like we we also go for this vendor certification as an individual. Like we are CISS, we CCSB. The reason why right. we go for that because we need to evaluate us against some benchmark. So right. that is right. why they have the standard certification for that. So right, this is a benchmark which has been set for the approved, information yeah. security. Yeah, approved information security benchmark. I can say where every organization has to follow that benchmark. Once they follow this benchmark, you don't have to for each and every activity or each and every process which you are working. You don't have to write the content. You don't have to justify, and just the one line certificate, one sheet certificate will serve all your purpose. Excellent. So, so Kavita, like you know, it is always a curiosity, you know, uh, how to implement ISMS twenty seven thousand one in the organization. Some people say. Create a policy based on that do gap assessment. 
some mm-hmm. say prepare the soa and then do the implementation control so you know there's always a lot of confusion you know someone want right. to know how to start matlab how to start mm-hmm. from zero i join one company and mm-hmm. uh, i have no idea about and i want to start implementing 27001 because in next 3 months i have to implement the certification so how it works how it start can you just help me out with that process sure sure i have a small presentation about it it's just a one okay. one slider uh, let me share that with you so that it gives the complete picture of how this implementation can be done so okay. implementation usually the time will take 6 6 months to 1 year for the implementation okay. for 6 months it will be uh, completely an assessment uh, the state of assessment where the organization is uh, heading this uh, when you have to have a uh, organization to be certified okay i have uh, classified this into five uh, buckets where you can say this one is a pre assessment internal audit external audit attestation and certification okay Great. so pre assessment yeah pre assessment is nothing but first any of the activity which you are conducting you will have to have a management approval any stage any performance any activity which you will do management approval is required and the standard has to be purchased it's not like a auditor has the standard and this standard can be used no the standard has to be purchased on the organization name these are very strict policy which every organization has to follow and then okay. followed by a gap assessment the gap assessment has to be conducted by an external uh, team who will conduct the gap assessment and they will give you the state of view where your organization is standing and okay. once the uh, once that gap assessment is conducted then the gap assessment report will be submitted to the management saying okay. these are the gaps which an uh, which your organization has to fix it to take it further if you do not fix this there are a lot of uh, usually what uh, uh, auditors they will do is they will do a show of financial implications as well along with the uh, the gap assessment so if you do not follow the certain controls the, there will be a revenue loss there will be a data loss there will be a resource loss all the parameters which will be shown in the pre assessment stage okay so it's and like then, you know uh, suppose if we work in like if we take example of india and we have a rbi guidelines so according to rbi mm-hmm. con- guidelines we need to have some control so we will amend those requirement in this controls also right correct me if i'm wrong right right uh, uh, since those uh, standards are confidential i cannot uh, show you the confidential uh, document but uh, yeah. the based on the document only i have prepared this uh, slide so as okay. per the iso standard these uh, parameters are set and then we will have to conduct the audit the audit uh, draft okay. will be pre- prepared okay what is so audit pre-assess- draft what is audit draft audit- is all about audit draft is like the pre assessment what you conduct uh, so a draft will be submitted to the management okay okay fine I have a small slide which has been prepared. How an organization has to, uh, how an organization can follow the uh, phase uh, to go for a certification. So okay. hope you are able to see my screen, right? Yes, we can see that. Yeah. So the, it will be, uh, you can call it as preparation or a pre-assessment, and then mm-hmm. implementation, internal audit, then external audit, and uh, then attestation and certification. Okay. okay so first comes to come uh, first it comes to pre assessment wherein for any assessment which you are doing or any of the activity in this entire cycle when you are doing first management approval is mandatory it's a written okay. management approval which is required this is a star okay. i can put it as double star management approval okay any of the activity okay and then second okay. comes purchase, purchase of the standard standards are available on bsa websites it can be purchased and it is mandatory before going on a, uh, before going for certification organization has to purchase the standard in organization name because this okay. is also one of the checklist while conducting an external audit auditor might ask can you please show me the standard so okay. the standard is or uh, will be uh, issued in the organization name that has to be shown and then comes to the assessment the pre assessment will be conducted that is the uh, pre assessment is nothing but a gap assessment will be conducted the current state assessment which will be conducted and submitted it to the management see these are the gaps which we are identified during the assessment once that report is submitted to the management management will will evaluate they will not just blindly say that yes you can go for the iso certification because there is a lot of cost which is in, involved in the gap assessment which the report has been submitted they will have to okay. work back to management again it will have to work backward look into the uh, the cost which is uh, involved in it and they will say that yes these are the controls which you can 
go ahead and okay. uh, once the approval is provided by the management then we do a internal assessment before conducting an internal assessment your organization is very huge entire organization if you have to do the uh, iso 27000 it will take a long time and it will take a lot of cost which is involved in it so what we do is we do a uh, scope of uh, work or you can say a statement of applicability where the controls what for example i am working in an infrastructure organization i don't have to go for a software uh, audit or i don't have yeah. to do my organization because the software which has been used in the organization everything basically it has been outsourced so i don't yeah. have to conduct again it goes as a for me it becomes a vendor assessment for vendor it becomes an iso 27000 or any other standard which vendor is following it it is that is how it works for me it is only yeah. that is why what we do is initially we do a statement of applicability so okay. i will show you the statement of applicability one I'm just sharing. So, uh, so, mein, when you're talking about Kavita, a statement of applicability, mm -hmm. so in that we basically depend on all the controls, what we mm -hmm. need or uh, what we have. Matlab, right. So once you understand the context, uh, context of the organization, you will get to know what has to be audited and what you will not have to audit. So once you understand the context, uh, context the statement of applicability will be prepared all the 114 controls which you can uh, update at this and you can say whether this is applicable or not applicable so how we basically so we, define whether it is applicable or not applicable like uh, like anyone is basically there to decide or what exactly like yes management uh, management representative will be there part of this well while you're drafting this initial scope of uh, work okay statement of okay. applicability when you are doing this management uh, team one person will be there with us and you will say yes this is what is the scope initially we will define and then later on if the scope has to be changed let's do it in the second phase okay that is how it it will be uh, defined okay and do we okay. considering other any other factors also like business requirement regulatory factors and all that do i need to consider that also in soa yeah Yeah. Yes. Yes. Some of some of the business requirements will be considered. Okay. okay. Well, uh, the regular regulatory will be the mandatory part. As ISO doesn't say that you will have to follow this. What it you says is if you have, yeah, it is good to follow. Always it says it's good to follow. So, for example, okay. there is a financial organization uh, which this ISO certification has to be done. So, what they say is yes, you will have to follow this ISO certification standards along with that the regulatory standards which your respective work stream is providing. Understood. Understood. Fine. Okay. Both has to go hand in hand. And sometimes what happen, uh, Kavita, like you know. Uh, no soa basically capture about what we have and what we need to achieve so when i say what need to be achieved which as i said regulatory requirement is there how mm -hmm. we justify management mm -hmm. because when it come to regulatory they will definitely have to follow comes right, to the right. second part is some which is not regulatory mm -hmm. but to have as per business requirement like example password controls okay so how we convince right. the management on that like that is sometimes it happens right you know there's a challenge always with the with the auditors or assessors implementers to convince the management on those controls so do we have any kind of a benchmark which talk about in this 27000 this is something mandatory to clear the certification also because some controls are mandatory to be comply no matter which right. industry is that so do we have right. such kind of issues in 27001 like yes uh, it says that the password guidelines has to be followed see organization will have to set their own defined password guidelines for example password has to expire within 30 days and uh, multiple logins three attempts password should be locked these are all the mandatory uh, requirement which an internal organization will uh, will okay. uh, set their own guidelines okay what okay. iso 27 says is you will have to follow your internal guidelines which has to be a day, uh, which has to be strong enough that it yeah it has to be very strong that nobody can break the password so it means that you okay. will have to follow the strong control it will not okay. mandatory say that you will have to put a three attempts uh, uh, you your login attempt will be uh, sorry after three attempts your account will be locked or your password has to be frequently changed it should have a multi character uh, or uh, a uh, special characters which has to be part of the password iso 27 uh, never force an organization to follow certain rules all these rules okay. it will never say but it will say follow your organization password policy so that you you are adhering to the 27000 as well okay fine no issues 
So you can see this uh, statement of applicability yeah, yeah, where yeah, it, it, yeah. Say, it says that this is the uh, requirement, okay? And this is the section which is there and the objective controls 5.1.1, which says uh, five, under section five, which is security policy, which is uh, five point, this is just an example I'm giving, information security policy, whether it is applicable or not applicable. Some okay. of the mandatory controls are applicable, like uh, information okay. security policies. And then uh, when you can talk about responsibility, segregation of duties, contract and authorities, okay. signing of okay. NDA, these are all mandatory. Whether uh, irrespective of an organization and the nature of work which you are doing, you cannot say no, I will not follow okay. this. Yes, it has to be okay. done. Okay. okay. And when it comes to, uh, I can say, uh, I can move to the control of ex uh, exclusion list, wherein I have uh, mentioned the exclusion list also. This is just an example which I have given. This keeping yeah, uh, infrastructure team in mind, and then I have outsourced my application to somebody else. That is the third party. He be he becomes a vendor for me, and I am the uh, person who is accessing all the uh, application. So, wherein okay. access control to the program source code development of the, the secure development, I don't have to follow this. But what I will have to ensure as an organization, I will have to ensure I will have to conduct a vendor risk assessment on them and ask them to share the details or we will have Excellent. to do a vendor risk, vendor risk assessment with them ensure that these controls are followed by the vendor okay. okay this is how the statement of applicability is designed and the controls execution controls which are ex excluded from the statement of applicability which you will have to maintain as part of the checklist right so this will give a very clarity about uh, this will give very clear view to auditor and for the management saying yes these are the controls which we will be following these are the controls as part of exclusion list which is already noted in the statement of applicability excellent thanks and we get the visibility about what is a control we have and what we need to achieve what is the next step after that like okay once we have the visibility of it yes i am uh, uh, the gap assessment <coughs> The gas, gap assessment controls are fixed. Again, we conduct a preliminary audit. That is an external okay. audit will be conducted. This is all about, I'm talking about the first time certification. Okay. Okay. The external auditor, again, they will come and conduct the audit and they'll see, yes, they will uh, actually compare against the initial audit and the current state audit and they'll see whether the gap has been fixed. What are the countermeasures which a team has taken to fix those audit gaps and how they have fixed and what is the timeline which they have taken to fix all these audit gaps? Once this okay. is completed, yes, they will say that, yes, you are ready for the final audit. Once they approve that you are ready for the final audit, yes, they fix a date when the audit will be conducted. Based on that, the audit will be uh, scheduled and the external team will be present for the audit. Okay. okay. And then comes the attestation part. Attestation is the first year which will happen. First year, nobody will give you saying that you are an ISO certified organization. First year, always it will be an attestation. And the second year will be ISO, uh, the ISO certification and the certificate also will be issued. And between this first year and the second year, yes, you will have to follow the entire life cycle. That is every quarter or every half year. The timeline will be fixed by the management or the internal uh, or, uh, information security team. When will the internal audit be conducted? Based on that internal audit will be conducted. And then the gaps will be again shared with the management representative or the management team who is representing their, ex their uh, team. And they will have to fix external team again they will come for the audit once they complete this entire cycle for one year then you are certified the organization the auditor will approve saying that yes this organization is following all the standards all the controls you can certify this organization and the final certificate will be issued so what uh, when i say the word uh, when we say the, okay uh, first year we don't uh, certify them so how see we did the investment right like we have invited mm -hmm. external consultant and all that to mm -hmm, implement mm -hmm. and everything so mm -hmm. what is an evidence they will give us that okay we are basically past this audits or we are basically reviewing this iso and all that because when you are certified you can use in a website we are certified but how we basically handle the situation in that case right right so what happens is they will give us an attestation certificate will be issued for the first year okay mm. that is how the industry practice where the attestation of certificate will be issued once the attestation of certificate is issued that they can post it on their website they can give it to their customers okay. they can do it in a normal process the okay. final final certificate including the scope what has been uh, 
added in the scope it will be part of the certificate and then you will get a final certificate so are we considering also risk assessment in the isms do we have option of conducting risk assessment also because yes, when we yes. implementing control so in which stage we do risk assessment so is all about risk assessment or what exactly the statement of applicability is like uh, the standard the, uh, we have 114 controls in the standard in that standard which is applicable to the organization which is not applicable to the organization we uh, we do it that statement of applicability and risk assessment yes it is a risk assessment also is a pay, plays a major role in uh, iso 27000 and uh, when we conduct this risk assessment actually kavita like uh, after completing of soa or what exactly no before conducting a soa statement of applicability before preparing the soa it's like it goes sometimes organization will have very minimal time sometimes uh, depending upon organization they do it hand in hand or uh, they prior to getting all the certification external team will con- come and conduct the risk assessment okay so what is included in the risk assessment can you just help us help us out with that content if if you have a high level idea okay so when you talk about uh, talk about the risk assessment basically risk assessment is conducted uh, uh, scope of uh, uh, availability sorry scope of applicability wherein you will uh, look at what teams you will have to do an assessment based on that you will do the risk assessment manoki i am doing it on a hr and i cannot do it on a development team saying that i will do a risk assessment on your team no you cannot okay. do that so okay. so uh, I, uh, what uh, what is the scope which you have defined before the audit yes based on that a risk assessment will be conducted risk assessment basically uh, it depends upon the information totally this risk assessment isms is all related about the information security how confidential is your data being kept how what is the integrity and what is the confidentiality measures which you have taken basically it is confidentiality integrity integrity and availability these okay. three components will be considered yes, so this is a report sample we have which give the idea so kavita can you just share out with you know details about what is all about yeah uh this this is basically a risk assessment report uh, wherein you okay. will mention the function name function okay. name is nothing but what is the function which you have identified for the risk assessment for example okay. i am doing a risk assessment on the hr team i randomly Excellent. cannot go and say, I, i randomly cannot go and say uh, development team i will conduct a risk assessment on your uh, mm. team that cannot mm. first so that what is that we define the functions which has to be assessed before so the function name will be mentioned and the sub function and the process name process description and the information information will be like what is it is all about information security like what information are we collecting for example i am conducting the information security assessment on uh, hr team how the uh, for uh, when i am conducting a info, uh, sorry when i am conducting a assessment on uh, hr it is more about the people related how was the document been collected how confident uh, how are we collecting the data from the resource how are we storing the data what is the timeline of storing the data who has okay. access to that data these are the details which are main part of the risk assessment so the rating will be more about confidentiality integrity and availability how confidential are we keeping this data integrity okay. who has access to it and the availability how many people can log in what is the criticality of the data and who can access the data the type of data all these details will be part of the information rating again the process rating the process rating also again it comes as confidentiality integrity and availability, availability. then uh, yeah availability process criticality value so there might be some documents which you are collecting but it is of uh, like not a high value data or uh, it cannot it just for your information resource might be sharing so criticality values can be mentioned and criticality levels can be mentioned and criticality rating once you derive all this who will be the process owner if something happens for all this who is responsible for addressing the management team okay and what is the existing okay. control which you are the standards which we procure it if you will have to mention each and every standard for which control will this uh, process your auditing falls in place okay. okay and existing information security details uh, sorry these two i will have to hide it so any of the certification which you are doing i let me not hide it uh, let me tell you so any of the certification which you are uh, auditing it is iso 27001 iso 27017 so 27018 any of the certification risk assessment will be the standard template okay you can just add the standard to it and add the controls to it okay okay 
and then description likelihood occurrence again this is part of the deep uh, dive into the risk assessment part okay and then what is the risk is treatment okay? option is it okay if you always create a confusion there you know who basically mm -hmm. define the impact and likelihood like you know here the auditor is giving a justification about that okay this is the impact if you don't implement the control or do we follow any company threshold and all that yes company threshold will be followed it is not auditor always will suggest he will not put any pressure on the other end saying that this has to be implemented but he will just okay. give you an advice saying that if this control is not been implemented these are the consequences which you will face but it is up okay. to uh, up to the organization level you accept the risk you mitigate the risk or you transfer the okay. risk that is how this is defined okay fine okay suggested control what is the suggested mitigated risk as per it is a co joint uh, uh, control sorry joint mm -hmm. feedback which will be it is a, a feedback which is provided by an auditor he will not force them to implement it but it has a management action on so because there is a lot of uh, financial cost a, uh, included in it. that is why uh, it is just an advice which is given by the auditor and what okay. is the timeline every action item has to be tagged with a timeline it is not that aaj maine audit kar diya okay done done and dusted no again it has to be have a timeline and the auditor internal auditing team will follow as per the timeline and then get back to the respective head department head saying that has this been completed if not completed why this is not been completed and by when when will you complete if there is okay. any escalation matrix which has to be followed if the activity is not completed yes the auditing team will internal auditing team will follow uh, the escalation matrix to get this uh, open item closed okay that's great yeah so these are again uh, a deep dive into the risk management uh, aspects of uh, the parameters which will be calculated or which will be taken into consideration while conducting the risk assessment so team if you want kavita next time again in this channel and uh, you're looking forward for the information security risk assessment session with kavita do drop your comments in this video okay we'll definitely look for kavita for the next video for the information security risk assessment because the way she explained so far about and 27001 it gave a lot of visibility for me at least where i got the good insight about you know when to do risk assessment control assessment and thanks kavita so kavita the like, soa has Thank been you. done we basically identify the controls uh, and uh, we suggest them to have a policies and all that then we basically release a final report like do we have a process of final report something like that which give the idea about the list of control deficiencies and all that do we have such kind of a concept in 27001 yes yes final report will be released before that the, the one point which i th i think i missed out whatever we are documenting for example the statement of applicability risk assessment and what is the process which we are doing internally everything has to be documented when an auditor steps in first thing he will look into the document control the documents has document to be there control. Okay. yes the document control there is a master checklist which has to be prepared okay based okay. on the master checklist randomly an auditor will pick up and say that yes for a human resource what is the document control which you are following when was okay. it last updated who has reviewed it and who has approved it these are the mandatory things which will have to be there so and it is a one document will... which talk about the list of controls we have in the sim yeah uh, what exactly is that okay information isms information security management system if your organization is too big it is difficult to handle you can have it a uh, split of it wherein you will have a master checklist and the, uh, only the heading will be mentioned in the sense uh, uh, the control name and the details will be mentioned in the master checklist and the okay. little bit of description will be provided in the isms uh, Uh, document okay and okay. connected to that you can have an extended version of it where it will give you a detailed disc description wherein you can maintain the policy you can maintain the procedure in a multiple documents if your organization okay. too small to handle then you can have a single document if your organization is too big then it is good to have a multiple documents so kavita like uh, is it maintain an excel sheet or doc version what exactly is that again i uh, it depends upon uh, totally on organization base uh, okay. uh, if your organization is way too big and you are able to up, uh, afford for the standard tools which are available in the market yes you can go for the market based tools if you are able to manage the the auditing team internal auditing team isms team is able to manage on an excel sheet yes they can manage it on an excel sheet or they can put it on a share drive any of them as it is basically left to them as per their so the way you have shown about the risk report 
Uh, mm-hmm. can you just uh, give a highlight not you don't need to share the document can you just give the mm-hmm. highlight about the tabs what we have in that master checklist if it's okay with you just yeah, sharing yeah, sure, not sure. you want, yeah yeah first thing basically they will have to have a cover page cover page which talks about more about risk assessment and the version control will be provided okay and next coming to the document control wherein you will have to mention the organization name what is this document all about okay. and uh, just a brief summary two line summary about the document what you're working on okay yeah. uh, if it is an initial version then we mention it as the version control has to be managed the okay. date when we started this document and who is the owner of this document who is the exactly. document controller that is who is written author of this document and who is okay. the approver of this document that will okay. be maintained in the second tab and then introduction uh, initially we had in document control we had just given a two liner saying that this is a risk assessment report and risk assessment and a risk treatment report okay? okay it can be mentioned in such way and then introduction you will have to give a brief introduction about all uh, about this risk assessment and then you will have to write about it like uh, which standard are you following what is the, met- the methodology which you are following what is the process okay. which you are following some 10 to 20 lines you can give the introduction about this entire risk assessment and then coming to the uh, risk assessment then the tabs which i showed you okay. wherein it is function sub function process process okay. description all these t- details can be captured uh, apart from this if you want any other documents to be uh, added to it then you can have a reference sheet Okay. So reference sheet, reference sheet tab can be added to it, and then you can publish to the organization. Okay. And then what is the next step after that? Like. Yeah. After this, you will submit it to the management. This is the risk assessment report. Basically, this has to be viewed by the department head, hmm. and then it has to be uh, viewed by uh, management. Department head, it is for their action, and management, it is for information and action because it has to be approved it has to be approved by the management uh, then once approval is provided by the management department head will take it forward and get this uh, action done by the team excellent what is after that risk assessment after then and you, you talk about the sheet and all that and then we release a certificate right and no then, no no no, uh, no. This, yeah. this is just a risk assessment which is part of iso 27001 Okay. This okay. is one of the param- parameter which it has been considered as an ISO 27001. Okay. Oh, Once sure. this entire activity is completed, external auditor will be part of the audit. He will conduct the management review meeting. Initial first day, he will conduct the management review meeting. And then he will start with the internal audit based on the timeline okay. provided to the department heads. Once Great. the audit is completed, Again, there is a management closure meeting wherein he will share all his findings in the closure meeting. Once the closure okay. meeting is completed, they will provide. See, uh, I agree that it is just a two days, three days audit. All the documents, sometimes it will be very difficult for the department heads or team to provide them because some might be confidential. One person user access will be provided. So in that case, some time will be taken by the auditor. So then based on that, all the evidence will be sh- shared with the auditor. He will conduct, again, the missing gaps will be looked at, and then he will issue the final report to the management, saying that Excellent. I have completed the uh, final audit for the assessment year so and so. This is my final finding. You can look into it and you can share your comments back. So management and the department heads will look into it and share the feedback. So to and fro will happen. And then uh, first year it is an attestation and second year it will be an ongoing certification understood so uh, like overall you know how much time it will take for this entire audit and implementations you can say again as initially mentioned it depends upon the organization size if it's an organization is uh, more than 10,000 or 15,000 I would say easily it will go around one year okay okay it is not just that uh, just going for a certification everything has to be documented for example Understood. i can take hu- uh, human resource yes from onboarding till resource offboarding what are the activities which you will be conducting everything has to be documented first auditor okay. will come and look at the documentation and he will say can you show me the proof of it what you are exactly doing so based okay. on that yes random sampling will be conducted based on that he will give the feedback that's great that is that is really um, uh, eye opening session at least for me for 27001 and uh, d- like just need to conclude this session so normally when you talking about someone want to learn 27001 
So mm-hmm. what is the process if someone want to learn this 27001? Do you have any idea? Like, do you want to share your idea about 27001 if someone want to learn on this area? Yeah, there are so many trainers in the market now. So they can mm-hmm. conduct this. Uh, they conduct this session. And okay. uh, after completing the session, there is a small assessment which will be conducted. Based on the assessment, they will evaluate the assessment and uh, certif- uh, the grading will be given. Grading okay. will be provided. And once the grading is provided, yes, they can consider you as an eligible certified uh, lead auditor and then certificate will be provided. Okay, that's great. And any uh, free resource do you, do you, uh, any free resource yeah, you, do you yeah. wish to recommend? Yeah, yeah there are a lot of uh, free uh, resource which are available on linkedin on udemy it is available they can refer to that initially so that they will get an overview of it how it how the entire certification works then they can go for the actual certification process from the market they can pick up excellent excellent and uh, what is the skill is required for a good auditor Uh, this is just the last point which can be a useful for the aspirants right right uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Repeat the question. Yeah, my question is like, what is a skill is basically required uh-huh. to be in a good uh-huh. grade auditor? Okay, so any division, any team, it is not specifically an information security which you're working on. Any, uh, for example, it might be a development, it might be an infrastructure, it might be an HIPA or it might be a PCI. You should be first, ex- uh, you should be expert SME in your subject and then. Okay. Uh, so that uh, your area, if you want to audit, you should be specialized in your area. And then this is an okay. add-on to it. This information okay. security manage- management system is an add-on to your existing skill. So the certification can be added to it. Say that, yes, I'm or I'm a certified lead auditor and I'm capable of conducting an audit on my specialization skill. Okay. that that That's also a great point which you have shared. And... Uh, so and you don't have to and, be a engineering graduate or you don't have to be no 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 this is all a myth so uh, i'm a live example same <laughs> no don't have to worry really about great. it that's really great and what is the career opportunity like if someone become an auditor like what is the next mm-hmm. opportunity he has that he can use and he can make his transformation career like you so, know we have called engineers and manager and all that so what is the mm-hmm. career opportunities he has after 27001 a lot of see all these days uh, nobody were uh, nobody was aware of information security audit so initially you were asking me like why should people invest in iso 27000 it has lost yeah. of a uh, uh, lot of uh, re- revenue which is to the organization cost to the organization why should they look into it yes now people have started after this uh, COVID. people have really it's an eye opener to everybody saying that yes i should have an internal auditor inside my organization. Okay. Yes, I'm getting an external auditor to do an audit annually, but I should have an internal audit to follow the ISMS measures, ISMS controls, ISMS standards. I should have an internal auditor. Every organization is uh, looking for an information security auditor. So it's That's like the market, uh, the market is wide now. The lot of openings uh, for uh, information security officer. And then based on your experience, again, organization ladder you can grow. That is excellent. Thanks, thanks, Kavita. Thanks for this particular session. And uh, I'm sure it can be a great learning for the people uh, when they basically watch this video. And this is the last question. Like, can I share your LinkedIn profile in a video description if someone need any kind of uh, assistance in career perspective, like they can reach out to directly. Is it okay with you? Like, yes, yes, you can. You can reach out to me. I will share you my LinkedIn profile link and uh, you can share it to people. I'm happy to assist. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kavita, for this particular session. And I'm glad that, okay, at least uh, I found this session is very informative and I'm, I'm, I'm going to apply the same principles when I'm working in the, some of the projects. And thank you again. Thank you so much for this contribution that you did for the cybersecurity and, and information security industry. And we're really thank thankful. We so are really grateful to have such kind of a session with the expert and we're looking forward for more session from you. I'm going to disturb you a lot in next year also. Sure, 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 sure. Happy, happy to work with Prabhu.
thank you thank you and team if you if you're looking forward for more uh, sessions from kavita and if you find the way of her delivery and all that you can reach out to kavita and uh, you can share your suggestions and uh, points in the comment box like what is the next video you want from kavita to be drive in the in the information security and if you're new to the channel do subscribe to the youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic and thank you again thank you for watching this video and wish you a happy new year in advance stay safe stay secure good day bye